got a butene molecule here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap this group here this ethyl group CH2CH3 with this hydrogen here and what we're going to try and find out is have we made a different molecule so here's the result so you can see I've swapped the ethyl group round so it's now at the bottom here and the hydrogens at the top and just have a look at those and ask yourselves are they the same or are they different and hopefully you can appreciate that they're actually the same molecule because if I do that it's exactly the same so there's no difference between these two molecules so all I've done now is I've moved the double bond in one position so the double bonds now here between carbons number two and three it starts at carbon number two so this is called bute -tuene. I'm going to do exactly the same thing now I'm going to swap one set of groups on one of the carbons of the double bond I'm going to swap them round and see if I've made a different molecule so here's the result we've now got the methyl group pointing down whereas it was pointing up on this one the hydrogens going the opposite way so are they the same or are they different now last time we flipped them round and we found out that they were the same do these look the same no nope, they're actually different molecules now these are different structures and that's because this carbon carbon double bond has effectively locked these groups into this position into this region of space I'll just separate them out a little bit so you can see that this carbon carbon double bond prevents any rotation so in this version you've got both methyl groups pointing up or pointing down effectively they are together on the same side of the carbon carbon double bond so they're both pointing up they're both pointing down they're on the same side of the carbon carbon double bond whereas in this isomer or this version of the molecule I've got this methyl group pointing down and this methyl group pointing up and again the carbon, do carbon double bond prevents any rotation and so that's what makes these molecules different so what we've got here is a form of isomerism known as stereoisomerism we've already seen structural isomerism where the molecules have the same molecular formula so they've got the same number of carbons and hydrogens but the structural formula is different whereas in stereoisomerism you can see what I've written on the board there these have the same structural formula but they have different spatial arrangements of the atoms or groups so structural formula for both of these would be CH3, CH, double bond, CH, CH3 CH3, CH, double bond, CH, CH3 so the structural formula is the same but the spatial arrangement of the the groups is different because in this one here these methyl groups that I'm holding are locked by the lack of rotation of the double bond they're locked this one's above the double bond and this one is below the double bond and they can't rotate round whereas in this one here the two methyl groups are locked onto the same side of the double bond so they're both pointing up in this case or down and so that was, that's what makes them different so these are stereoisomers the system we use to name the isomers is known as the EZ system so you can see now I've written the letter E underneath this isomer and I've written the letter Z underneath this one here so why is this the E form? well it actually comes from a German word 
um, beginning with E called Entgegen, which means opposite. So you can see here that these methyl groups are on opposite sides of the double bonds. This one's above the bond, this one's below the double bond, so Entgegen is E. And the Z form from the German word Zusammen because the two methyl groups are now on the same side of the double bond and zusammen means together so these are together on the same side of the double bond now the way to work out which is the E form and which is the Z form what you need to do is you need to look at each carbon in the double bond so if we look at this one first and you have to establish the priority group. So carbon in the double bond, we've got a methyl group here and we've got a hydrogen here. Now the methyl group takes priority and that effectively is because it's heavier, it's got a higher atomic number and so this is our priority group on this carbon. Hydrogen's just got an atomic number of one so it's got very low priority. And then if we look at this carbon, you can see we've got, obviously, this methyl group here will be the priority group on this one. And so when we're concerned with the priority groups, how, do they, um, how are they related to each other position-wise? They're on opposite sides of the bond, the double bond, and opposite is E, Entgegen. This form... Priority groups are both on the same side of the double bond, and so Zusammen together, so this is the Z form. So I've put another pair on the board here, and what we're going to try and establish is which, which is the E form and which is the Z form. So if we just apply that same rule that I've just shown you, so if we take each carbon in turn in the double bond and establish the priority group and then compare the relative positions of those groups. So if we go for the left hand carbon in this one, so this one here, we've got a, a CH3 group, a methyl group, and then we've got a CH2 CH3. So straight away you can see we've got a bit of a problem because we've got carbons on both and they've got the same MR or same atomic number so we look to the next atom along now obviously this is just bonded to hydrogens and this is bonded to another carbon and so therefore the priority group is going to be this one here a bit easier on this carbon because we've got a hydrogen versus um, a methyl group so we've got the priority group there so you can see now that these priority groups are on opposite sides of the double bond. And so this is the E form Entgegen for opposite. Therefore this must be the Z form. And we'll just check that that's the case. Priority group, methyl, ethyl, so it's obviously this one here. Hydrogen, methyl, it's obviously this one here. And so therefore... These are on the same side of the double bond, and therefore they are together on the same side, zusammen for together. Now there's a handy system that we can use to establish whether this type of isomerism EZ is possible in an alkene. And again, it cons you have to consider each carbon in the carbon-carbon double bond. So the way the rule works is you take the first carbon in the double bond and you ask yourself, are these groups the same or different? Well, they are different because this is a CH2CH3, this is an ethyl group, and we've got a methyl group on this carbon. So we've got different groups on this carbon here. And then let's consider the next carbon along in the double bond, hydrogen and methyl, well they're obviously different, so different and different, then 
yes, this isomerism, this EZ isomerism is possible. Now let's apply the same rule to this alkene that I've just put on the board there. So we're taking the first carbon in the double bond. What have we got on this carbon? We've got a hydrogen and a CH2CH3. We've got an ethyl group, so different. This carbon of the double bond, you can see we've got a methyl group and a methyl group. So we have the same group on this carbon, and that means the isomerism is not possible, and I'll show you why in a second. So all I've done is I've created a second molecule to the left here, and I've taken the hydrogen and the ethyl group, and I've swapped them around. So we've got the ethyl group on the top now, and the hydrogen on the bottom, and because these groups are the same, if you watch, there's absolutely no difference between those two molecules. So the rule is, if on any of the carbons in the double bond, if you've got the same thing attached, so it could be the same atom, it could be two hydrogens, it could be any atom, as long as they're the same, or they could be the same groups, we've got two methyl groups in this case, this isomerism ceases to be possible.